teeth whitening materials and procedures. Teeth darken as part of the aging process, although some teeth are discolored from medications or chemicals incorporated into the developing enamel and dentin. In a society where they strive to maintain their youthful appearance, patients desire to regain their brighter, whiter smiles. This has caused an explosion in the demand for cosmetic dental services. The use of whitening products has increased dramatically over the past quarter century. Whitening of teeth has become a significant part of many dental practices. Whitening can be done as an in-office procedure or as a, a home procedure supervised by the dentist. The Dental Auxiliary, depending on the State Dental Practice Act, can perform many of the procedures associated with the whitening process, such as making impressions and custom trays, delivering and demonstrating use of home whitening materials to the patient, providing home use instructions and precautions, and helping with various steps in the in-office whitening procedure. They can answer questions patients have about whitening. This team effort can help in the growth of the practice as please patients tell their friends and relatives about the excellent services they received from a knowledgeable, caring staff. Teeth whitening or bleaching. Controlled research and case studies indicate that whitening with peroxide products is safe and effective. Many stains and discolorations of the teeth can be removed or lightened by whitening products. However, some stains are more difficult to remove than others. Types of stains. Teeth may be discolored by extrinsic stains on the tooth surface or intrinsic stains incorporated internally into the tooth surface, often when the tooth is developing or a combination of both. Long-standing extrinsic stains can penetrate the enamel to become intrinsic stains, which makes the removal of the stains more difficult. Extrinsic stains. Some common foods or drinks that are known to contribute to extrinsic staining of the teeth include coffee, tea, red wine, colored cola drinks, grape juice, and berries. Poor oral hygiene accompanied by pigment producing bacteria and food stains can also produce extrinsic stains of varying colors. Tobacco products and betel leaf chewing also contribute to staining of the teeth. Antimicrobial mouth rinses such as chlorhexidine can contribute to surface staining. Some extrinsic stains limited to the surface can be removed, in part by toothbrushing, whitening dentifrices, and whitening mouth rinses. The dental hygienist can remove other stains, hand or ultrasonic scaling, coronal polishing, air polishing using a spray of sodium bicarbonate or aluminum trihydroxide, aluminum trihydroxide under air pressure. More stubborn stains that have penetrated the enamel surface cannot be polished or scaled away. These may require whitening products and peroxides to remove them. Intrinsic stains. Intrinsic stains are internal and may be a result of developmental disturbances of the teeth during developmental or hereditary conditions, or they may be age-related. Developmental disturbances can result from trauma to the developing teeth, illness with high fever, and excessive intake of fluoride or certain medications. Intrinsic stains, such as age-related discolorations that are yellow or light brown, are easier to whiten than blue, green, and black stains. Blue, gray, gray, black, and yellow brown stains are often caused during tooth development by chemicals or drugs such as tetracycline or doxycycline. As a consequence, they are incorporated deep within the dentin and are also found in the enamel. Other antibiotics that are cycline derivatives can cause discoloration of teeth in adults as well. Externally applied vi vital whitening usually takes much longer to lighten tetracycline stains and achieve an acceptable result. Whitening may make white spots from mild fluorosis less apparent by making the whole tooth whiter. A single dark tooth should be radiographed and tested for vitality. Even if the tooth is symptom-free, the pulp may have died. Stains associated within, with endodontically treated teeth may require internal whitening. Some stains, such as those caused by amalgam or dental caries, are resistant to whitening. For stains that cannot be removed by whitening, tooth-colored restorative means such as veneers, crowns, or composites must be used to eradicate the discoloration. The History of Peroxide Whitening In the mid-1960s, some periodontists began applying peroxide strips to aid in healing of gingival tissues, following by periodontal treatment. Soon after, orthodontic Bill Klusmar began using the approach by having his patients apply glyoxide, containing 10% carbamide peroxide to the interior of the orthodontic positioners to reduce gingival inflammation. Quite by accident, he discovered that their teeth were also whiter. 
The discovery was largely ignored until the 1980s when general dentist John Monroe, directing his patients to use a 10% carbamide peroxide solution to reduce gingival inflammation, noticed that their teeth became whiter. He developed a technique to fabricate a vacuum formed plastic tray to contain a peroxide solution. He collaborated with a manufacturer resulting in the first commercial whitening preparation in 1988. Heyman and Haywood in 1989 introduced the technique of night guard bleaching using a much more viscous solution to which carbopool, a thickening agent, was added. It allowed the whitening agent to remain in the tray much longer and increase the whitening time. Later in the 1989, Dan Fisher created a very thick whitening gel of carbamide peroxide called opalescence, ultra dent products, and the use of night guard whitening became widely popular. How whitening works. The enamel of the tooth crown is composed almost entirely of mineral with microscopic spaces between the enamel rods that contain water and organic material. Stains accumulate within these small spaces in the enamel and over time that penetrates into the dentin. Whitening occurs when a type of peroxide or other whitening material passes through the spaces in the enamel and reaches the dentin, where it releases oxygen-free radicals that oxidize the stains and subsequently lighten the color of the dentin, not the enamel. So if they ask you on your board what is whitened, it is the dentin is being whitened. This process can be accelerated by the use of low intensity heat or high intensity light, such as with conventional composite curing light, a laser, or high intensity plasma arc light. Open carious lesions and leaky restorations can allow the whitening agents to penetrate too deeply into the tooth pulp. Pulpal irritation can result. Whitening materials hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide products are available as a liquid varnish or a gel in concentration ranging from 5 to 40%. Gels usually stay put best due to viscosity while liquids can be more readily seep under a rubber dam and cause tissue burns. Varnishes typically remain in place for a specific period of time due to a clear protective coating placed over them. PPE must be worn by the patient, operator, and auxiliary when performing in-office hydrogen whitening procedures. Carbamide peroxide. These products are per popular for home whitening and are available in liquids or gels in concentrations ranging from 10 to 35, but some 44% gels are also available. Carbamide peroxide is a weaker oxidizing agent than hydrogen peroxide. A 10% carbamide peroxide gel breaks down into 3.35% hydrogen peroxide and 6.65% urea. The urea further breaks down into ammonia and water and increases the pH value of the solution subsequently providing beneficial side effects of slowing demineralization by bacterial acids as part of the carries process. Carbamide products also contain either carpal or glycine base, and which slows the release of hydrogen peroxide, making it work for a longer period of time. Hydrogen peroxide, you guys, usually is for 30 minutes to wear it, okay? Carbamide is usually overnight. Hydrogen peroxide is usually for people that um, can whiten their teeth pretty quickly. So like my teeth, whereas carbamide, that's usually used on people with tetracycline stain and that have more of an intrinsic stain because it's on your teeth all night long, whereas hydrogen is just on your teeth for 30 minutes and then it's done activating. So pre-treatment evaluation, prior to starting whitening process, thorough evaluation must be done. So radiographs, clinical examination, cause of the stain, treatment needs for whitening, altering whitening, the ideal whitening procedure, uh, dental caries, leaking restorations, abscess teeth, root re resorption, all of those things should be addressed before starting the whitening process. There are three main treatment options. In office by the dental, dentist and staff, at home with a dentist prescribing and dispenser whitening material for the patient to use, and then at home with the patient purchasing these over the counter. In-office whitening, whitening of vital teeth. In-office whitening is ideal for patients who want results quickly. Advantages of treatment in the dental office include direct supervision by the dentist and the staff, elimination of patient compliant issues, control over the whitening process, and ability to discontinue treatment if a problem arises. Whitening is done in the dental office for both vital and non-vital teeth. A vital tooth has a living pulp, which produces response to temperature changes or electrical stimuli. Whitening involves the use of various strengths of hydrogen peroxide solutions and gels or carbamide peroxide gels. 
For years, whitening was done by means of a liquid consisting of 35% hydrogen peroxide in the application of a heating lamp. This method can be effective for a single tooth whitening, but it is time consuming process and technique sensitive. If any of the liquid contacts the tissue, it can cause chemical burn that will turn the affected tissue white and cause slothing of the tissue and be very, very painful. If gingival tissue is affected, vitamin E oil obtained by breaking open a vitamin E capsule should be applied to the site as soon as it is discovered. Vita ble Bleaching Guide 3D Master, so power whitening. It's the use of a strong whitening agent which may be activated by high intensity light has become very popular because it can be completed in one visit and there is no need to rely on the patient compliance as with home use systems. Many patients simply do not want to spend the time to whiten their teeth at home for several hours, days, or overnights. Special curing lights, light emitting diode, LED light, plasma arc light, or argon laser, laser light may be used with power whitening systems. Some of the older systems utilized had ultraviolet light, and the clinician must be aware if this type of light is being used at, as there are additional precautions to take for the patient. When using a UV light, additional protection is needed on the patient's lips and nose. It would be best to have the patient provide a sunscreen of choice to limit allergens or breakouts. The treatment time is usually 45 to 60 minutes. Systems that use light activation of hydrogen peroxide products include the Zoom, Philips USA, and Laser Smile BioLace technology. Research shows that the use of high intensity light is not necessary for whitening to occur and at best it may hasten the process. The important factor are concentrations of the whitening material and the contact time with the tooth surface. Due, the high, due to the high intensity light being, not being essential to successful whitening, there are products which have been developed that do not use a high intensity light. Systems using these products include Perfection White, Opalescence Extra Boost, Illumum and Nivius. Whitening materials should be stored and refrigerated for prolonged white shelf life. Whitening varnish. As with in-office white power whitening, whitening varnish has become popular as well. It can be completed in one visit. It is not a technique sensitive as power whitening and only remains on the teeth for 30 minutes rather than for an hour. The teeth are isolated and the gingiva protected with a resin dam material. After isolated, the teeth are painted with a 20% hydrogen peroxide whitening varnish. Once all the teeth on the maxillary and mandibular arches have been painted with the varnish, a sealant layer is placed over the varnish to keep it in place. After 30 minutes, the teeth can be brushed or the varnish can be wiped off. Teeth whitening can uh, be continued at home with whitening gel and custom trays. Whitening of non-vital teeth. A non-vital tooth no longer has living pulp and ceases to give response to electrical stimuli or temperature changes. When a pulp of the tooth dies, the necrotic breakdown of products of the pulpal tissue and hemoglobin from the blood and the pulp escape into the surrounding dentinal tubules. Chemicals from these tissues cause intrinsic staining and the tooth becomes dark. Whitening of non-vital teeth in the dental office typically involves teeth that have undergone root canal therapy. Whitening of non-vital teeth require movie, removing of the restoration from the endodontic access cavity and whitening internally through this access. The tooth is isolated with a rubber dam to prevent whitening solutions from contacting and burning the soft tissues. A 30 to 35 percent hydrogen peroxide solution or gel is placed on the pulp chamber on a saturated cotton pellet. A hot instrument is plunged into the cotton several times to activate the peroxide. An alternative approach is the walking bleach technique in which a commercially prepared bleaching, whitening gel, or paste made in the office from sodium perborate monohydrate and 30% hydrogen peroxide is sealed into the pulp chamber with a temporary restoration. With the paste, both the sodium perborate monohydrate and hydrogen peroxide products release oxygen that help whiten the tooth. When the patient returns in two to seven days, the whitening material is removed and a composite or amalgam restoration is placed in the endodontic access cavity. Probably white, probably a composite. So basically, when the dentist does it in the office, it's going to have a higher um, percentage of hydrogen peroxide. 
if the dentist sends it home, but you can still only get that prescription at the dentist's office, it's still going to be at a higher percentage, but it's still going to, it's going to be safer than uh, what he would do in office. And then if you buy it over the counter, it's, it's not going to hurt you at home. You're not going to burn yourself like you would at the dentist's office when they're doing it. That's where they have to follow all the protocols. So think about that whenever you're talking to your patients about whitening. If the dentist does it, they're going to have quicker results and it's going to because they're doing it right then. If they're doing it at home, yeah, they're going to get those results, but it's going to take a lot longer. So you can kind of think about it as flying a plane. If you fly a plane from St. Louis to Indianapolis, you're going to get there really, really quick. So that is in-office whitening. But if you walk or let's say you ride in a car, you're going to still get there at a timely manner, but it's not going to be as fast. So that is like a take-home prescription from the dentist. And then if you walk, that's the slowest. And that's like if you buy something at Walmart. So I hope that this helps. And um, you guys understand kind of the difference in the whitening. Uh, the summary is whitening of teeth for cosmetic reasons is a popular aspect of cosmetic dentistry. To be effective in the providing whitening services and advice to patients, clinicians must be knowledgeable about in-office prescribed home whitening and OTC products, including their indications and contraindications and potential side effects. Staining of the teeth caused by tetracycline or blood products from non-vital teeth can be the most difficult to remove. Patients need to be advised of potential limitations of treatment and other pros and cons before providing their informed consent to treatment. And dental assistants and hygienists are important team members in providing these popular cosmetic procedures.